Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. It's me again, Jen. Hello! And I'm here with my dear friend. Oh, Ron <laughs> Tobin, yes. <laughs> I love introducing myself to that. Friend. Master extraordinaire. Uh, yes, yeah. master of writing. Of course, of course of nature. Of course of nature. Master of vampires. Master of hypnosis. Uh, well, do you have like a degree, a master's degree? Do you have that? I, 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 I have. Oh, okay. Over 300 hours certified. Yeah. Okay, that's wow. That is massive right there. Okay, so Ron is here talking to us. Totally sidetracked on that one. <laughs> Ron is here talking to us about the steampunk tarot because he bought this deck for me as a birthday gift. I just remembered that it was yes, a birthday gift. Uh, when I was back at Lo Fi Coffee doing podcasts for Brick Cave. And that has long since gone to the wayside, but I'm still friends with Ron. Ron and I met uh, under interesting at the, circumstances. At the Velma Teague Library. At the Velma Teague Library under strange circumstances yeah. where pirates were involved, because pirates are typically involved with me. So, poor Ron got to learn all the crazy stuff that I do, and now he's been suckered into this for the month. So let's see what card we've got for today. Card that's fully <laughs> representative of my world. Yes, <laughs> I just yes, it is the fool. The fool. So the fool is not necessarily a a foolish card hmm. necessarily. So you resonate with this yes, card a lot. Yes, I find though. it. Yeah, it keeps showing up. If, if, so if we've talked say. about before that in Tarot Cafe we tend to pick a card that is our card. And we've picked a few other people's cards this month so far. And Ron feels deeply about the Fool card. Mm -hmm. And I I can feel that. Because like you sure. do take a lot of risks and do new and exciting things and tend to be excited about the unknown. Whereas some people fear it a little more. Mm -hmm. So for you, though, with hypnosis, what is the feeling with the Fool card? Well... With hypnosis, I think the, the fool is in if you don't pay attention to what you need. Oh. I mean, if you, if, if you don't, you know, of course, yeah, you can also end up taking risks when you're doing hypnosis. It's not that the hypnosis itself is inherently dangerous. It really, it truly isn't. Not that you have a completely incompetent person doing the hypnosis. And even then, basically, it's... It's very benign. I feel yeah. like, in a way, the, the hypnosis, the person who is helping you through the hypnosis, the expert or, or hypnotherapist, that, that's like the proper term, right? Yes, hypnotherapist, yes. is more like the little puppy mm -hmm. over here yes. because they are kind of pulling you back. We're, we're just trying to present guidance and help you find the solution. Yeah, then you won't fall off that cliff, but you, mm. you can keep going on your adventures and things, but they're oh, yes. there to kind of be your, your loyal guide to these things. Exactly. So I, I kind of like that the little puppy is there in response. And yes, that it, little guy is very important. If you get a tarot deck and there's no little familiar on there, the little companion, look around on the card because I can almost guarantee that he's somewhere. It may not be a dog. It may be a cat. It may be a furry little creature. It may be some representation of like holding back and having guidance and safety that safety net because yeah I, when you when you hypnotize people you always have a way to bring them back oh absolutely absolutely okay, so so i've had a few people that it takes more, more than one time to, to read them back but it, the people come and those people just totally utterly relax and that's fun <laughs> You're like, that's fun i mean the worst that could happen to you honestly in a hypnotherapy session is you could totally fall asleep Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, if, that, if that really and truly happens, that's about the only time then the hypnotherapist can, can lay hands on you and gently try to wake, get you to wake up. Oh, so this but little yeah, so dog tugging on your leg. There's, there's, there's a joke from this film, Office Space, where a guy goes to hypnotherapy and the hypnotherapist dies and he never wakes up. That won't happen. At the, at the very most, <laughs> you would just go through a natural sleep cycle and wake up. That would be... <laughs> Nobody is doesn't put you into a coma. No. Oh my gosh, that's oh, yes. that's a oh, yes. crazy It's, it's joke. totally funny, and hypnotherapists think that's hilarious, but but at least those of you have a sense of humor. Yes, <laughs> yes, and I I like that. Really, then this card and the hypnotherapy aspect of it 
is that representation of kind of coming back from that cliff, but coming back from the ridge mm -hmm. and gaining knowledge as you look out over it and then coming back and applying that knowledge and applying those things that were kind of embedded into you through the hypnotherapy mm -hmm. kind of thing or, or opened up or accessed oh, yes. kind of well, thing. Well, post-hypnotic suggestion is certainly a valid, a valid concept. Like, I always ask somebody, okay, what do you want me to, to uh, put into you that you'll remember that you can use? You can access again and again, yeah. Because it is, it's about not just like, it's not always about falling off that cliff, but seeing being at the edge of that cliff Absolutely. and seeing everything that is out there. And then the hypnotherapy gives you that access as well. So I, I find it so fascinating that you've had to like kind of keep bringing some people back so that they are hard to come back. Well, yeah, so, some people, and I love the ones who tell me they're going to be hard to hypnotize. Most people hypnotize relatively quickly. That's a trust issue. Uh -huh. I mean, if somebody tells me, absolutely, you can't hypnotize me, I'll just say you're right because I'm not going to try. You're right. <laughs> right. I mean, what's, what's the point? You're not even open to it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. I like the trust aspect in that because oh, the pool is also a big trust yes. aspect trust. part. When it comes to hypnotherapy, trust is everything. If you go for a session and you find you're just not vibing well with the hypnotherapist, you just say thank you for your time and you go. Well, there yeah. you go. And uh, if they're a good hypnotherapist, they're not going to be offended. They're like, yeah, it doesn't work for everybody. I think yeah. that's true with a lot of things well, because I do Reiki yeah, as well. Fun, here's a funny point. For me, I've been more successful with female hypnotherapists than male hypnotherapists. Go figure. Everybody's different. Exactly. It could be a tone of voice, too. You have a very calming voice. I like your voice. Thank you. So, but hopefully we will hear a lot more of Ron's voice in future episodes and future studies of the cards. And I'm super excited because also I just remembered that Ron this month is going to do a salon at my house. And no, it's not a salon like getting your hair done. It is a salon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Nobody wants me to do their hair. Like the enlightenment period. And he's yeah, going to do some hypno hypnotherapy <laughs> stuff. So I may even record that and put it up here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling about it. If it's really weird, I might be like, no, I don't want anybody to see that. So anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. And I will see you very soon. Bye. Bye.